Yeah. Yeah. And so, you know, again, all due respect to what people are doing and saying, because I think everybody's trying to help each other. I don't think people are corrupt. I don't think astrologers are out to try to con are out to try to confuse people or mess people up. They're trying to, they're helping and they are helping. It's better to be looking at this than to be not looking at it, but it's even better to be looking at it correctly. Exactly. Again, this is literally what it says in the text is that it's almost better to not have any answer than to have the wrong answer. Because for example, back in those days, for example, you had the forecast, of course, you had the, you know, you had the, uh, you know, you had the Brahmins who were the educated caste, then you had the Kshatriyas who were the warriors, then you have the Shudras who were the, I'm sorry, you have the Vaishyas who were the merchants, and then the Shudras who were the workers. And so if someone, let's say, were, was a Shudra who was the lowest class, they weren't educated. So, okay, they weren't educated, but they also did, it doesn't mean they didn't know anything, but exactly. what they knew, they understood. What they knew, they understood. And if, as long as what you know, as long as you really understand what you know, you're going to be not just content and peaceful, but you're going to be very close to the truth because you understand your existence. And there's a deep wisdom. This is why there's a deep wisdom to people who are very simple. Simple doesn't mean you're a simpleton. It doesn't mean you're stupid. In fact, people who live a simple life, which, by the way, all of them did back then, our lives were much simpler they didn't have all the technology. Now we're so utterly distracted and our minds are so complicated and we have the illusion that we're so smart because we have a bunch of gadgets and a lot of data around us, but we don't understand any of it. We don't understand literally, we, we don't really comprehend or even understand the world we live in now, all these things beyond our control. And this was the kind of warning back then that it's better to be a simple person who understands their day-to-day -day existence that's connected to the rhythms of life and the cycles of nature and all of that stuff that leads to a holistic consciousness than to be educated and, have, and think you have an answer, but have it be wrong, have it be the complete wrong answer. And that's actually the plight of the, of the world now. We're all pretty much educated, but we're educated about the wrong things. We don't understand who we really are, what the, con what the universe is, how spirit descends into form, all this stuff we're talking about. How many people really get this? I mean, it's probably one millionth of a percent of people. I don't know, but it's, I don't know, but it's not enough. And so this was what they talked about back then. And so for people that are looking to study astrology, and want to start, and they're throwing around ideas, you know, the good and the bad, and the, oh, the karma, and all of that. People need to back up and really introspect and evaluate how much they really understand these things. Because it doesn't take much for us to think we understand. I call it the illusion of understanding. I saw it very early on. Everybody telling, oh, I know my chart is this, and I know that, and I know my karma. But I'm like, man, you don't, you don't understand any of this stuff that... You exactly. think you understand. And the biggest problem is confusion. This is Rahu. And this is why astrology is very much related to Rahu energy. Because the biggest problem isn't fear and anger, because they're in some ways quite obvious. We can see the Mars and the Saturn stuff. It's hard to deal with, but we see it. We recognize when we blow up. We recognize when we're isolated and fearful. But we don't recognize the Rahu confusion because we think we already know. Oh, I know what that's all about. What? And it's like, no, that's why the nodes are confusing because we think we have a clue with the nodes. And that's more damaging than fear and anger or something we can see. It's the thing that's dark that we don't see. And we think, oh, I know what karma is. I know what astrology is. I know all this. But what about this other thing? And that's what makes us like crazy. Yeah, it's like a craving for, you know, new, new information rather than trying to know what is there. And many times people uh, start searching, you know, how to yeah. work smart, you know, that's this new word is there, you know, hard, hard work, don't work hard, work smart. <laughs> and with Rahu, it's very, you know, you can go right to the origin story. <laughs> and the problem with Rahu is it's this head that's disconnected just going around eating more stuff okay the okay the solution is i need to gobble up more information i need to gobble up more experience and the problem is the head's not connected to the neck and the digestive system and it don't 
it's like I always tell people with a lot of Rahu, you need to eat less and digest more. Don't spin out on more information because you don't even understand half of what you think you know. And I'm being generous. You need to like stop digest, stop eating and start digesting. <laughs> you know, so it's it. And we live in a very Rahu culture. The world has always been very Rahu, but now particularly with all of the, all of the, um, you know, all of the media and all of the, the illusion of knowledge is just rampant now. So a couple other things here that I think are really interesting, and it talks about, if you want to talk about illusion, one of the most, one of the most, um, one of the biggest illusions is actually what we're looking at when we're doing astrology and the astronomy. So I have a couple images here it says the sun is the center of the solar system and everything is orbiting the sun and this is how we see it in astrology right wrong <laughs> this is how it is but this is a geocentric i'm um, sorry this is heliocentric but we see astrology this way uh, this the zodiac is a geocentric structure astrology charts are cast from our perspective on earth so because we're the only central point, again, this was, a plan, this was a class on transits. So first, we need to understand after karma, we need to understand what are we looking at when we look up in the sky? We're talking about transits. What are we even looking at? We're looking at the sky from this perspective, the earth in the center. And the reason is because we're the central point. Everything is unfolding and moving based on where we are, not based on the fact that we're orbiting the sun. We, we don't live on the sun. We live on the earth. And based on where we are, we're seeing all of these things go through the sky. And they had to calculate what that is because we're on a ball that's spinning and going around the sun. And those other objects are also going around the sun, but we see them moving through the sky from where we are. And then you bring the sun into it and we're also orbiting the sun while all this is happening. So it, it took them thousands of years to grapple with what was actually going on here. But astrology is still based on a geocentric model because that's where we're seeing it from. And we've incarnated on Earth, and we're seeing all of that from where we are. So it's a very, it, people need to get their head around this. And this is why there's so much confusion about zodiacs and all other kinds of things, because it's confusing particularly with the sun, because, again, not only are we orbiting the sun, here's a, you know, we're orbiting the sun, but from where we're standing, the sun is also orbiting us as one of many other objects. So the objects going around the earth, including the sun, are what we actually measure with the zodiac. But us going around the, but us orbiting the sun is what's measured with the calendar and all of the calendar factors. Sorry about that noise. That's fine. So the sun is inherently confusing because it's one object that is measured two different ways. And it's the, uh, obviously the only object we measured two different ways. So first we have to grapple with where we are seasonally with the calendar but then we see the sun move through the sky just like we see jupiter venus and whatnot so this is why especially in india again and they never they never wavered from this the zodiac itself the zodiac is the sky and it's sidereal aligned with nakshatras sidereal there's you know again there's no variation on this as it relates to the zodiac and of course the seasons and the earth going around the sun is what you would call tropical but i don't really like using that word that's a western term it's called the sora calculation which means that um that uh that um that it, it's uh, based on the earth going around the sun so these calculations are two totally different things as we now see because zodiacs move differently um, and one is actually the zodiac, which is the earth surrounding the sky. The other one, the tropical, is we take the earth going around the sun and project that into the sky. 
to measure the planets. It's, it's always relative, you know, in, in that sense, if you take. <laughs> but both of them, whether it's the Earth, whether it's the seasonal zodiac or the sidereal, both of them are measuring the sky going, uh, you know, the planets moving through the sky. They're not measuring the Earth going around the sun. That's actually not a zodiac per se. You can use it as a zodiac. You can take that calculation and project that into the sky and say, I'm going to calculate the objects moving through the sky based on the Earth going around the sun. But it's not inherently that, because whether you use that as a zodiac or not, we're still measuring the Earth. It's inherently a calendar. I mean, inherently means what it inherently is. Tropical zodiac is not inherently a zodiac. That's why I don't like to really call it that. It's inherently the seasonal calculations and the annual seasonal calculations. It's the earth going around the sun and how that creates solstices, equinoxes, and seasons. And that's always what it was. It was never, it, it only became that calculation later when they wanted to stabilize it. But anyway, um, so I just wanted to talk about that too. When we, we didn't get so much into the transit so much, but it was a fun conversation anyway to talk about a whole lot of things here. And maybe we could talk more about it, uh, finish up uh, at some point. Yeah, yeah, we can, I think, talk for five or ten more minutes. And so the thing to say is that this whole, um, this whole geocentric, this is called a geocentric, which means from the Earth, and this is heliocentric, which is from the Sun. This whole geocentric point of view is what we're doing. Now, again, way back in the ancient times, Ptolemy, Hipparchus, and many of the Persian astronomers didn't even really yet know how the, how the universe worked, although they were sure they did. This is how they thought it worked, that there were these rotating spheres and epicycles and all of this. And this looks pretty crazy, like, well, this isn't right. But actually, even though it's not technically right, it's correct. It accurately explains what we're looking at. In fact, it explains it better than this because we're not looking at this. We're here, and the way the planets move looks like this. So this was called the Ptolemaic theory, and it was developed by Claudius Ptolemy that standardized a lot of the Greek astronomy and whatnot at the time. And um, so it was prevalent for close to 1,500 years, and it proposed that the stationary Earth is at the center of the universe. The stars and heavens are rotating around the Earth. The planets orbit in self-contained sp uh, spheres, which correctly predicted retrograde motion and other planetary movements. But the entire model wasn't correct then, but we still mostly use it now because it correctly describes the way we see the universe. So again, we have to understand that People need to, you know, we, we really need to open our minds when we start talking about different ways of seeing the sky, seeing the world. And by the way, even though I just said about tropical zodiac being the calculation, it's not inherently a zodiac, it doesn't mean it's wrong. I would never said it's wrong. It's certainly not wrong. You can do that for sure. Um, it's not what Vedic, it's not, it's not what Indians did. And, you know, we can have right here, this is an example, even just very quick of five Vedic astrology texts that show clearly that the zodiac is sidereal. So they always use the sidereal calculation, planets moving through the sky sidereally. But the fact that people calculate it a different way doesn't mean it's wrong. So we have to be very open and tolerant because there's entire systems that developed to calculate it that way. But what's interesting is that the model that we use in astrology is actually an incorrect <laughs> literal model of the universe, but it's observationally correct because we're observing everything from where we're standing. We see it all move. And that's more important than even calculating it correctly because we don't live on the sun. We live on the earth. So there's nothing but illusions. We're just nothing but in a world of illusion. <laughs> and it's very easy to get stuck in that illusion for sure. All the spinning and twisting of the planets um, twists up our karma, twists up like our DNA is this big spiral helix of twisted, you know, um, you know, you know, chemicals. And so we come down here in this sort of twisted up orbital illusion that we're trying to unravel. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you have to say? <laughs> yeah, in fact, uh, regarding this, the only thing which I will say is that 
there was once a question which was asked that which shoe size is better number eight or number nine <laughs> so uh, one of my gurus he said that whichever works for you if eight fits then that's for you if nine fits then that's for you whichever f- works for you just take it and it's not only with this i guess it's with the all the uh, sub domains of astrology so there, there's the debate always you know that which is the best form of astrology is it parashara is it jaimini or is it you know nadi or kp or you know any any other form of you know, hellenistic any other sort so the answer is very simple if it works for you just take it <laughs> absolutely and there there are distinction there are distinctions though and again i don't i don't know of anyone who has ever said that it's wrong to do well i i shouldn't say i don't know of anyone because i do know of some people that say that it's wrong for example to use a certain zodiac or it's wrong to do something a certain way they're very rare and they're very fanatical um to say that one zodiac is completely wrong or something like that it, they're very rare but and so there's enormous tolerance that i've seen i've been doing astrology full time again i mean close to 20 years at this point hardly anywhere and and i know most of the famous western astrologers as well at least many of them quite well and we get together and talk about zodiacs and all this and there's never this oh you're wrong because you're using this or whatever and we speak very honestly and freely about it um so there's enormous tolerance but and that should be a standard but one of the things that needs to be understood though is that you don't get to make things up and 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 there is still also a lot of this stuff that goes around where people make things up and they try to make it out like again there there're few but these kind of fanatical ideas that no this is wrong this zodiac is wrong and here's my proof and then the proof is wrong and then this whole big thing that kind of stuff even though you know again it's very easy to be tolerant like you said and like i said i'm tolerant of whatever somebody wants to do except come out and make a bunch of false statements that confuse everybody that's really not cool <laughs> that's not okay of course it's okay that people practice however they want and i'm always interested in seeing what people do and i've been doing it a long time but i'm not interested when somebody comes out and says see this this means they didn't know what they were doing and then it confusing everybody that's not cool it's just not scholarly and it's not correct so that's the only thing people need to watch out for these sorts of things but as they say you know my way is the highway <laughs> yeah and and of course it and it shows itself to be intolerant as well uh, it it has a very short shelf life and this is part of the era that we're living in is that you have this kind of thing there it's very small but it also needs to be called out it's not just a to each his own yes to each his own but if people start we still have to be vigilant to truth and that's what that's always been what i'm interested in and um so but anyway it was great to talk to you and maybe we'll uh, maybe we'll chat again yes thank you very much and it was an amazing enlightening session so much so much on karma we discussed you know the gravity analogy was perfect <laughs> uh yeah yeah i think it'll be helpful for people to ponder these things and that's always the you know the last thing is that that's one of the things that astrology should be and it's very sad for you and i when we see people get scared and turn it into this terrible thing it's like man you're missing it it's the beauty of life it's the specifics and the beauty of god creating the universe and your connection to it and your divine essence when i look at someone's chart i don't look at all that stuff i don't see all of that everybody's got their issues but people are missing the real opportunity which is to connect to the heart and mind of god and of the divine mother and even seeing all the beauty and how the divine mother prevents you from harming yourself and making mistakes and how our desires are short-sighted so we don't get the things we want sometimes because the divine mother is benevolent and is protecting us from doing stupid things and so again to see astrology as something we're fighting against or something that helps us you know defeat saturn or some other kind of weird idea is just sad it hurts people's heart it hurts my heart to see it and so I'm really interested and I really appreciate your work of also bringing these things out and 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 enlightening people about that beautiful devotional aspect too and the science as well it's a combination of both <laughs> Amazing thank you very much and we will record more soon and yes uh, most of the people will know you but for those who 
are seeing him for the first time then uh, you can always go to his youtube channel and you can subscribe and you also do consultations as you mentioned from yeah there'll be a link down there and also to the handout that i had i didn't go over all of it but it also has a real overview of a whole bunch of stuff from the transits class it, it's a it's a very good resource yeah yeah so i will pin it down in the description so whoever will definitely <laughs> many will be interested to see you and you know most of them know you so you can just visit his website also okay thank you very much right. and uh, thank you sir see you soon again all right